monster movies. is await. G'day guys, and we are back again for another show of comics to movies and more. We have a superstar of a guest tonight. So after two weeks away, it's been an absolutely massive couple of weeks, but we'll get that out to the into that in a second. Uh, but Stephen, as always, uh, thank you for uh, coming on again tonight. How are you today, mate? Oh, good, good. Yourself? Oh, look, um, up in Sydney anyway, it's been raining like crazy. It's actually got flood warnings and all the rest of it. So it's been raining now for about four or five days. So hoping for some sunshine next week, actually. <laughs> That's That would be great. Well, it's been sunshines and rainbows over here because uh, the reasons why we haven't done a couple of shows in a row uh, with people that have already probably seen on my uh, Facebook profile, we are super excited to announce that there is going to be an extra comics to movies and more fan in July or August of this year as I am going to have another little baby girl. So I'm super excited about that. So we had one week off for that um and uh you would have seen uh prior um to us uh jumping on live you would have seen the new video which will play towards the end of the show as well and that is for our brand new website which we're hoping goes live this week but it might be the week after so i'm super excited about that and then on top of that tonight we have the most awesome guests I think we've had on since Dan Furigal. We have Martin Copping, who, if you don't know who he is, he's an Australian film, television, theatre and video game actor, best known for his role in the title character of Grindhouse film Zombie Hunter. He also voices Mozzie in Rainbow Six Siege, and he is the second Lieutenant Lucas Riggs out of the Australian Army 20th Battalion in Call of Duty vanguard so we have martin in the background he's gonna <laughs> talk about what an intro awesome. what an intro i know I'm, i've been practicing <laughs> that one all week so um but we're going to be talking about his film the dunes which i have been lucky enough to to see uh we're going to be talking about crowdfunding and everything in between but without further ado martin how are you going tonight thank you for coming on I'm pretty good, and congratulations <laughs> on the uh, the new member to your family. It's very exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been been a long time coming, but uh, super excited uh, to have another uh, another family member um, in the, in the mix. So yeah, super excited. Well, oh, congratulations! Look, congrats, John. That's that's fantastic. And look, uh, welcome, Martin. Like uh, we met up Thank in you. Sydney, so I'm really really glad to have you on. Yeah, no, it's great to great to be here, and it's good to uh, good to have all three of us together. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, we'll quickly say hello to the chat to everyone that's here. So, hi, Sassy Gal, uh, the Decker King. What? What's what? up, Decker King? Uh, <laughs> Moira, how are we going? So, that's all the way from Scotland. Uh, yes, Nathan has worked his magic again on that video um good evening grace how you going um and yeah we'll get into the chat further but um thanks for making it uh, yourself available i know uh it's late at night and uh sorry for not telling you that this actually goes out live and that you thought it was <laughs> i know, a, I, know a I didn't know so. like, this is pre-recorded isn't it <laughs> it sure <laughs> goes no this is live I mean, uh -huh. <laughs> at least at least i'm gonna at least I got the time right. My, my last two really yeah. good guests that we had on, I got I got an hour wrong, and they're, they're like, um, 
no, it's it's not that time here. And I'm like, oh, I've done it again. Really you know what scary. it is? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on a state. It's Queensland. Because Queensland makes a different time zone. Because Queensland yeah. doesn't have daylight savings. So AEST, there's actually a separate uh, time zone just for it. They've marked it up for the whole eastern seaboard. Yeah, yes. I, didn't, I never can figure it out. I've been telling people that my streams and what have you are at AEST, but apparently I'm AEDT. That's yeah, correct. because yeah, the ESC that. is only for Queens. Look, and none of us are from Queensland, so let's pick on Queenslanders. <laughs> right, I know, I know. Yeah. Well, I was just in Queensland, and I've never been more confused. Just being there, I couldn't <laughs> figure out any time on anything. It's weird. It's the curtains. Yeah. They, 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 you know, daylight savings. It's just they don't want to have wear down the curtains as much because you know the sunlight, less sunlight. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's. I true. did find it hilarious that they that they um did it for a year. And they, the whole state, almost went insane. Um, so, <laughs> so they're like, "We're not, we're not doing, we're not doing that again." So, um, yeah. but we're we're here to to talk about. And if people don't uh, don't know, you are not only an actor, but um, you have uh, written and directed uh, a movie called uh, "The Dunes." Yep. Um, which this is the the awesome um, poster poster for. So I have been lucky enough. Um, to have seen uh, a, a exclusive version of, of this, um, but when can people uh, um, start to see this um, on a small or big screen? Um, in Australia, uh, I can't re- release the details just yet of where yep. you'll be able yep. to watch it. But uh, I, I think April first, um, oh, it'll awesome. be it'll be available. Let's awesome. talk the story behind it, though, because this is actually uh, how you got this to bring to life. And I always like, or, you know, it's a comic book thing. I love origin stories. Yeah. You start this as a Kickstarter and you raised, uh, uh, you know, it was a fantastically run campaign. You raised over 50K for it. What was the process before the Kickstarter? Because I think that's where it became brought, you know, into the public. But you had to do a crap load of work before then. Yeah, yeah. So the Kickstarter actually, um, that was more of a Hail Mary. I I lost my mum in 2015, 15 or 16, 15, I think. And I went through a breakup uh, with a girl I was seeing and I was just going through some shit, you know. And in the past, uh, you know, and I think we've all done it from time to time, you deal with difficult things in uh not the healthiest ways. And I, I think I'd gone through some kind of little maturity uh, growth spurt. And I was, you know, I really felt like to, to sort of process everything that I was going through, I wanted to do it in a really positive, only in positive, healthy ways. And by only doing positive, healthy things, it helped me and helped other people. And um, But I had a lot of shit that I was working through. And so I... Uh, I thought, well, you know, what what better way than to sort of channel it into a film? And uh, because that's, you know, that's kind of been my chosen medium for the last last 20 years. And, um, yeah, I decided in a day, uh, well, the girl that I was seeing <laughs> at the time, we caught, up, we caught up for a coffee and she'd started, uh, after we broke up, she'd started dating some director. And, uh, and- wait, 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 I've got to stop there. Did she do this to get get it back? Who, look, no, no. no. <laughs> you, you, you'll learn a bit about me here, right? So we're, we're having a swim. Uh, I got a pool at my place in Los Angeles and we're having a swim and she's saying, you know, that she started seeing this guy. He's a director. She said, yeah, he's making his first, he's going to direct his first feature film in November. And I'm like, oh, good, 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 good for him. Good for him. <laughs> And uh, and she, and then she, and then she left, you know. And I, and I kind of walked inside and went into the bathroom and looked in the mirror, and I said, "Not before I fucking do." Is <laughs> <laughs> a true story. Is a true story. And the next day, I went down to one of my really good friends' place. He's got a place in Malibu, and uh, you know, I was still a bit busted up about the breakup and. And and he's like, here, I have a cocktail. And so I sat at his bar, and he made me a cocktail. He makes good cocktails, and uh, and I I was on uh, this app called Credit Karma, checking my 
uh, my credit score. Credit score. <laughs> And it was it was surprisingly good. I think I like I, you know all my credit cards were, were clear and what have you. And and an offer came up for a uh, for a new credit card. They said you've got great approval odds. And I you know I'd had a cocktail and I'm like oh, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> I pressed it and I got approved. I'm like fuck because you know I did it pretty rough in in. LA for a long time. I, you know, I didn't have much money and I sure as shit wasn't getting a, approved for credit cards. <laughs> and I said to my friend, Brian, Brian, make me another cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started going through the, you know, my uh, credit camera app, applied for another one, got approved. Another one got approved. And, you know, a couple of cocktails later, I had a $30,000 credit limit and um, I went, all right, I'm making a movie. So that's how, <laughs> wow. I, that's how I financed it initially. And, um, Went home the next day. I went and met with a, uh, a filmmaking couple, some friends of mine, and I pitched the idea to them. I said, look, I need to steal your husband. I need him for 10. I think I can shoot the film in 10 days. Um, I'll fly him back to Australia. I'll house him, feed him, give him a little bit of cash and uh, buy him whatever equipment he needs. And he, that she said, yep, sure, we'll do it. And I was like, great. So went home and then the nerves kicked in. I'm like, oh, this is like what have i done what have i done you know <laughs> and at this stage i hadn't spent any money i was like i put it out there and i was determined and you know when i say i'm going to do something generally I, I will do it and or i'll i'll die trying and uh and a day passed and i they hadn't really done anything i hadn't booked any flights and then the next day i was at home and i kind of had a moment with myself and i went you know if, if if you don't commit to this, it's you'll be like everyone else that doesn't do anything in Hollywood, you know, who just talks about it at coffee shops. Because there's a, a great of, idea. The great yeah, idea. Has, has, we've all got it. And so I just I rang my friend. I go, give us all your proper, you know, your legal names. Um, and he did. And I booked his flight. And I booked my flight. And I was, you know, I think the flights were pretty expensive that time. So I was six k in the hole. And uh. I, I booked the flight for 10 days away and wow. then I realized I didn't have a fucking script. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, shit. And I, you know, I can write, I've been writing for years and years, but I just, you know, I'm not like you. I don't love sitting down and get, getting into it. I don't have the patience and, um, and, but I, I had to do it. So for the next 10 days, I, I wrote out like, I think I have figured out I had to write six pages a day, get me an 80 page script, um, had the beats that I needed to hit. I already had a story in my head. Uh, you know, it, it revolved around one, one location, you know, primarily. And I uh, got up at five o'clock every morning, went to my coffee shop and just wrote until I had my six pa pages um, or as close as I could get before my brain melted. And then 10 days later, got on the plane, flew to Australia, got the crew and, and cast and everything together. Uh, it was a run and gun shoot. Pretty much the whole film was handheld. Um, shot it in 10 days, came back. Um, and th then the real process began. I, I you know, I, I couldn't, I sort of spent all the money and I was like, shit, I got to pay for this. Um, and I need more money to finish. We needed some more footage that I needed to shoot in LA. So then decided to do the Kickstarter campaign and um, I was going to go for 20,000. And then the day before, no, the day at the morning of launch, I, you know, because you can type in the box how much you have to type in how much yeah. money. And I had 20 and I'm like, I can't do this for 20. That's not even going to clear the credit cards. Um, and then I'm going to max them out again and I'm going to be screwed. And so I just went, fuck it, 50, enter. <laughs> and then I had, I was working with this Kickstarter coach and, uh, and I called him. No, he, he, he called me. I get a call from him, frantic. Call me, call me. I go, what's up? And he goes, the fuck have you done it's we, what do you mean and he goes fifty thousand dollars you don't even have anyone famous in it there's no way you're gonna get 50 grand i'm like yes i will i have to <laughs> and then it was the hard like no shit the hardest month of my life hardest month i was yeah you know up at up at five o'clock in bed by maybe two or three i was getting a couple of hours sleep a night and uh just on that campaign, everyone that that uh, contributed, I'd send them a message and what have you. And um, yeah, I was I was freaking out for a few days, and then it 
it kind of it kind of took off and yeah we hit our target a month later somehow yeah because it's crazy um like for those people that haven't done kickstarters before it's it is like more than a full-time job because you know uh it's not only about um just that getting the word out there it's all that stuff about building your brand and your community behind the project so that is that personal touch of reaching out to everyone that backs it's the the updates it's keeping everyone in the loop it's the um you know uh working out what else you need and that's that's you know, just the Kickstarter side, let alone what you're doing on top of either your day job or or getting trying to finish off the the movie and everything. But I find that even more impressive, considering oh, I've seen it and it doesn't feel like a um you know some films feel rushed if they're yeah. shot quickly, and yeah. it does not feel rushed whatso whatsoever. Um, oh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, it's um. Would would you classify? I, I I thought it was like a, a thriller. Is that what you I, generally I, would kind of classify that in? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I consider it. I consider it a thriller. I'll just say, with the Kickstarter, I did have a group of people helping me who very kindly came on board, and I had a team of about I think eight, six or eight people uh, who were you know put in so much time. So to all of those guys, thank you. If any of you are watching, but um, yeah, I, I would call it a thriller. I call it a a slow burn dramatic psychological thriller yes it's there's probably too many words in that sentence but that's that's you know that's what, what i is. think it is yeah. you know it's it's not like it's not a really quick in your face I, I haven't sort of used too many sort of traditional thriller jump scare techniques or any of that shit i just i think the backbone of it is is the story um you know it's it, I think this, the story is what carries the film, and um, and then there's tension and some some twisted stuff starts happening. But um, I think that you know the way we shot handheld was for two reasons. One, it, it keeps a lot of movement, and I think it keeps the audience off balance. But also, it means you can shoot very quickly. You don't need to set up tripods and and dollies and and shit like that. And um, you know the the DPs that I had actually had. Uh, four people shooting on it at separate times. We had Chris Eckstein who did all of the Australian component or the, the primary Australian component. Ben Nicholas did the uh, the final scenes. I shot all the flashbacks and a guy in Los Angeles, Sean Hart, uh, did the opening sequence. Um, so it was, yeah, and 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 I think it I think it really worked. It it gave different uh, sort of different elements, cinematography elements to each separate section of the film. Um, and then we wove them all together and yeah, so thriller. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that I really liked about this, and I've made a, a comment to my wife the other day, sometimes I find with Australian, um, films and TV shows, um, or, or just sometimes writing in general, they use really cliche lines and like, you can almost know what the person is going to say before it. And yeah. if anyone hasn't seen the um, TV series The Bump, um, which is based on a, a girl that uh, didn't realise she was pregnant and, and, and all that type of stuff, and, and this film as well, what I loved about it is it was how we speak. Um, yeah. and, and I find I get frustrated when I watch a film and go, we don't say that or that's not how, how we talk or, or something like that where I watch this and I've gone, the, the interaction with, um, between two of the main characters, I'm like, that's exactly what, you know, I, I would say, you know, type of thing. It wasn't that cliche yeah. line of, you know, oh, um, get out of my house or, or blah, blah, blah. It was like, you know, that, hey, like, what, what the fuck are you doing? Or, or, you know, type of thing. It was actually you know, a, a normal reaction of what someone someone would have. So that was the other thing that I really liked. I actually went back and watched it a second time because I was like, oh, you know, I feel like the first time you're just getting used to the, the story and I, and I really enjoyed it um, the second time even more. So, Oh, good. Yeah, I think it is one of those things, you know, as you know, I primarily work as an actor and um, the further I've got along in my career, the more I get television scripts and it's the same, it's a, you know, it, it is a formula. It's a formula that works that people are comfortable with. And, um, 
you know, I think a lot of your traditional sort of network shows, and I've worked on a couple of them, um, and they differ a little bit between Australia and America, but they've both got their formula and they've both got their standard dialogue that they use. And, you know, I think that's how they have their consistency that people can kind of lock onto. You get it with the NCIS and uh, CSIs and Hawaii Five-0. It's, it's, it, it's a formula. And I get frustrated often when I'm, I'm getting the scripts and I'm like, you know, if I'm the criminal, I didn't do it, I swear. I'm always swearing. I swear at fucking everything. It's like, <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. And, you know, oh, she, she, she didn't do it. I, I swear. And the amount of times I've said I swear in shows that I've done, but in the auditions, like, you know, I've done a handful of shows, times that by about a million, that's how many auditions I've done. And it's, yeah. you know, it's it's like, oh. and it, but it's good for, if it's written like that, it makes it really easy to remember your lines. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of the payoff is like you're like okay I can it just it sinks in and when it's well written in a formula, um, you I can read it a couple of times and and it will really sink, sink in. in. Whereas you get a lot of independent films that are not very well written, and you I can just run the lines, run the lines, do every technique I've got in the book for learning lines, and I just, I'm like, I can't learn this. This is so. And I, my mum actually told me when I started acting, she's like. If you can't remember your lines, it's poorly written. And that stuck with me. And so now if I can't remember my lines, I don't blame myself. I blame the fucking writer. writer. <laughs> this guy can't write for shit. <laughs> that is the best ever. That, that's a mum's advice for you. That's yeah. not your fault, honey. If yeah, you it's, can't it's remember your lines. It's somebody else. There is yeah. one comment I do want to highlight. It's by uh, the Decker King at 1010. you got to pop that comment up. After Moro's comment, I love this. It's the, the reason why you, you made the spite. film. It's spite. <laughs> <It's a spite. laughs> yeah, Decker, uh, Decker visits my streams a lot and, uh, uh, yeah, knows me very well. <laughs> uh, I have to say I had a, had a similar, similar um, situation. I uh, was with, with a girl for several years and, uh, you know, one – one one drunken night, uh, we we'd broken up. Um, and one drunken night, I was in the in the in the city and uh, um, walked past. There was a summer camp um, convention at the Crown Casino or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, what's this?" You know. And I, I walked in and ended up walking out, going to America for twelve months. Uh, wow! <laughs> literally, just packed up, uh, come home, and said to my mum, "Oh, I was about, oh, I was twenty, I think, at the time." I was like, "Yeah, mum, I'm going to America um, for a year." And she's like, "You don't have a passport? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, I'll, I'll f- figure it out, type of thing." So, um, yeah. we, we've all kind of had those 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 situations where you're just like, I tell you what, you know. Well, just, sometimes, yeah, you need, sometimes you just need a little bit of inspiration and, and it can come from anywhere. And for me, that's, you know, that was the thing that I was, it was like the, the final straw. I was planning on making a film when I was 60 and uh, <laughs> I thought, you know, I'll get my acting career up and I'll make a film when I'm 60, I'll start directing. And, so, uh, so that's what I was going to ask. So before this, ha- ha- was there any inclination in you to go, hey, I want to write and direct my own own film? Uh, I, I mean, I've made short, I've directed short films. Um, it's, I, I, no, I've ne- I'd never had like a burning desire to direct ever. It, it had never been a thing. I, just, I wanted to be an actor. Um, and then through circumstance and not booking work, I started producing my own uh, content, which is what, you know, I think any smart person will do. Um, and I would, but it was difficult. I had a lot of resistance to doing that at the start because there was a part of me, I think, that felt like I'd failed as an actor if I couldn't break through, you know. Um, now, it, you know, reflecting, I look at most of the biggest and greatest and most successful actors in the world produce all their own content, you know. And, um, and, but for me, it was, it was a big sort of, uh, hurdle to get mental hurdle to get over, like to go, no, this is just, you know, this is okay. And, um, but directing, it wasn't really a thing. And I I directed a few things. I directed some music videos, a couple of short films and didn't really know what I was doing. Like I didn't go to film school. I grew up with a dad who was a director and a cinematographer. So I, I, I knew the basics, but, um, yeah, then I, I don't know, 
it, it kind of I've been wanting to make a feature. I was probably going to produce it. And I think when this opportunity came around, I'm like, I, number one, I can't afford anyone else. Yeah. Number two, I don't want to be told what to do on this. I just want to do what I want to do. And, and you know, I got, had a few people come on board and there was another producer who was going to come on and they were really uh, juiced about the project. And then as soon as, you know, the second conversation came, so I think would, we should do a rewrite and make the lead character a female because females are, you know, they're hot in Hollywood right now. Fuck off! That this is my <laughs> this is was the whole point of this is so I can you know do a movie that I'm acting in. So anyway, needless to say, I, I didn't talk to her after that. <laughs> I was done. Oh, done. So, so, yeah. so, so the question everyone wants to know is: Did you get it out before this other person directed? <laughs> yes. And did she come back? <laughs> no. No, no, I don't think I've ever seen her since then. Wow. Yeah, never. Wow. I don't think I've ever spoken to her again. That being said, um, thanks very much to her. She put a hundred bucks into the Kickstarter, which was very thoughtful. Hey. Oh. She has no, she has no idea that she was part of the inspiration for the film, but <laughs> she does know now. <laughs> <laughs> if she watches oh. this, she does. Oh, yeah. that's hilarious. Uh, Mandeep also has a question: um, Will this release uh, worldwide, and will he be able to watch it in the UK? So. Uh, Mandeep and Moira are both uh, in the United Kingdom, so yeah, I would I, I would say so. Um, Australia is looks like it's set, um, and then I move off to the other territories, and um, I'll probably hit the US first, and then then start hitting UK, and New Zealand, um, and then yeah. expand if, from there. If pe if people don't know how uh, distribution works, it's unfortunately not just you get a deal and it goes goes everywhere. Although some some um, yeah. uh, films are like that. It's like you, you're selling in one place, then you move on to the next, sell it in the next place, then move it on to the next, sell it in the next place. And, even even uh, big studios have to well. sell by region. Like that's yeah. why you yeah. hear a lot of what Disney is doing, and uh, they you know they play to the China market, for example. And yeah. China could easily say, you know what, you're we don't like your film, you're out. So every region, even if you're a big distributor, yeah, individual contracts per region. It, it's, yeah. There so is that's, no one contract for every the whole world. It's yeah, so but, annoying when you, when, when you Google, oh, where to watch this film, and it says, oh, Amazon Prime, and then you go on Amazon Prime. It's like, oh, except for in Australia. Yeah, it's not available like, in this okay, country. So it's on Netflix. Oh, no, it's not on Netflix. So no. you go to Stan. No, it's not on Stan either. You have to rent it from the Telstra shop. And you're like, what right. the? <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it is tricky. But look, I think. Everyone's pretty computer savvy these days, so if it's been released anywhere, usually people can find a way to watch it. Yeah. Um, now, with, without VPNs, something now. VPNs and switching v IPs, in case anybody wants to ping exactly. me afterwards. Yeah. It is. I'll let you say it. <laughs> you know, so, so, uh, so, uh, that is not authorised by Comics to Movies and more. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <no>. He's a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> we all use them. Um, now... Now, uh, going on to, to your, your game stuff, um, yep. how, how is it being uh, like, you know, you wanted, wanted to be an actor and all that. How is it being being in like some major video games? Mm. Like, you know, and then, then seeing your, your likeness in, in, in a video game, like it's, uh, I guess on film, you're kind of like, well, I know what I look like and everything. But to then see yourself as like a, uh, um, you know, army veteran and, and all that type of stuff. Um, how, how was that process and, and everything like? Yeah, it's very cool. I, obviously, the first one, um, the first one that really hit was for me was Siege. I'd done uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare before that and another uh, AAA game, uh, which hasn't been released yet. But um, yeah, Siege was obviously the first one and you know they've got they've got a, a really tight really passionate community um you know the people that love siege love siege and you know they're really supportive and um and so that was yeah playing mozzie and and that wasn't my likeness you know it was my voice um but they ubisoft encouraged me before i went up to the six invitation or to say some voice lines and chuck them on instagram and they did some uh they like reposted uh, the videos and it, my socials kind of exploded. And then I, I, I threw them up on TikTok, not even really knowing what TikTok was. And, um, my TikTok exploded 
you know, I started getting like a thousand to five thousand new followers a day, and I, I was just saying voice lines, and um, and so th- that was that was cool because people were really letting me know how they felt about the character. They were teaching me about Siege, um, you know, that I was seeing all the memes that come out, you know, because I hadn't really played games in a long time, and um, and it was a buzz. It was a huge buzz to sort of see my work um, finally being recognized by a lot of people because you know that a lot of the work that i've done in film and television i've done independent cinema and i've done lots of little bits and pieces in tv but i've I've never led a show or anything so i hadn't kind of had any i guess for lack of a better expression fan interaction um and it was nice to see people appreciating the work that you do you know because i hadn't really experienced that before um and then you know, to do uh, Vanguard was where they did use my likeness was super cool because all the fantasies that you have as a kid of being like a superhero, you know, you, you start seeing it. You're seeing this, you know, amazing. Not just your likeness, though. I'll give you some bit more props. You would, you're the lead poster. You're the guy dead center. Well, in in Australia, yeah, yeah. they used they used my image. I think I was. Uh, a little bit further in the background in the in the American uh, point of sales, but yeah, you know, it, it was pretty wild. You know, there were posters all around the world, and um, you know, pe- I don't think I don't know that a lot of people could who knew me could recognise me because my face was covered in dirt. But uh, the people who knew that I was in it would send me pictures of me on bus stops, and um, and it's you know, it's cool. It's it was it was cool. It was like fuck. You know, I dreamed about this. I had a bet with my friend Tim Phillips when we moved to Hollywood. I think it was a hundred bucks, whoever to whoever got on the Sunset Boulevard poster first. Ah, uh, I won. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I actually that was one thing I was going to do with the Dunes. I was going to pay to put the poster on Sunset so that we both won our competition together. Because he's the other lead in the Dunes. Dreams. I still nice. might do it. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was great. It, you know, it's been a really, um, a really rewarding experience. And, um, you know, as you know, I stream on Twitch and, and so I, I, now I get to play the games and I've sort of found a, a, a whole nother aspect of my career that I'm really enjoying where I get to interact with, you know, a lot of the people who play the games and, and who have supported me a lot, you know. <coughs> Pardon yeah, I have, I have to say before. Um, uh, so uh, how we met was was through Stephen at uh, yeah, uh, and you guys met at, at Oz Comic Con, and I was uh, checking out your stuff and uh, watching your chi- uh, your Twitch stream, um, and and watching your play as, as your own character. It, it's a it's a hoot, and then I went back and watched um, uh, some of your YouTube ones that you, you had up, and that was really cool where you went through. And uh, as they were doing the um, at the animation style, you're like, oh, I remember shooting this, and, and yeah. I found that really interesting. So I love my, my my video games and everything. Don't get to play as much as uh, I would like, but it was really cool to actually hear someone just talk through it and go. Oh, like you're like, oh, this is really fucking weird. I was wearing this helmet and they're telling me I have to look at my feet and I'm yeah. saying my lines and I'm like, why am I looking at my feet and, yeah. and all that type of stuff while the game was playing? I was like, that's such a, a, a cool cool experience. And I'm not sure whether other um, voice actors uh, do that, but I thought how cool to give back to the community in, in that way in regards to really in-depth behind the scenes of, of how the thing thing was made. So do, do you enjoy doing that part of, of um, uh, like, your content making and everything? Yeah. I, like, streaming on Twitch really has become something that's very, very dear to me. Um, you know, it, it's been a it's, – it's a strange thing, I think, with – you know, working in the games and what have you, uh, you know, a lot of my friends are actors and, um, you know, th- my close friends are very supportive, but it's not something you want to bang on about too much. And, and and it's super exciting, you know, when you're working on something you're really passionate about, you want to talk about it and you want to share it with people. Um, but, you know, they've got a lot of, you know, my friends have got their own shit going on and 
my mum's not around anymore and dad my dad's you know he's he's very old and he has dementia so I, I can't really share it with him and the time I get to go into you know to the streams and have the community in twitch and you know go through the game with them is magic and, and the truth is like you know I learn it with uh with my film work I used to show movies to my friends that they didn't fucking care like they just they just want to be my friend and, and that's it generally like um, yeah. they're not they're just not that interested in my work um I, but, I hate people that uh you know like uh self promote and, and everything and just like push themselves um out there saying like look at me look at me look at me um yeah i just just hate those type of people that that uh that do that look oh, at him go oh, look at him go are you a guest Mate, at, he's uh, unstoppable well, this well, yeah, the what? Are, are you going to be a guest at oh pointing the right way that no is... no 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 i yeah. i uh i'm not going to be there but the dunes does have a panel um which is the film that i made it's got a panel at supernova um did i mention sean keenan's going to be there <laughs> um but the, yeah so the dunes does 4 p.m. Four, on four, I think it's 4.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, our executive producer, Adrian Powers, who directed me in uh, Forbidden Ground or Battleground in the U.S., which is the first uh, first feature film I ever had a lead role in um, that we shot in 2013. He was one of the EPs and post-production supervisor on The Dunes, and he's going to be doing a, a panel for an hour. Um, and he's just incredible, super charismatic, a wonderful guy. Um, and, yeah, really sort of came to the rescue on on the dunes and uh yeah he's just he's just great so he's he's going to be doing the panel make sure you you go up and say good day both of you if you're there um and uh, yeah i think it should be super fun um i mean that combined with you being there oh my god <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable <laughs> I, I was looking on the supernova page and and uh the latest actor that got on there. He only had like about 40 likes and a couple of shares. Yeah, after I got all my friends and family just to click on the photo of myself, I had at least 70. Was... <laughs> well, this, look, this is the, this, this is the you know, this is the problem with, with actors is they don't put in the work, you know, and <laughs> Yeah, if you want to, if you want to get a job done, sometimes you got to do it yourself. So I, I applaud you. I take my hat off. I would do the same thing. And I do do the same thing. Ask anyone who knows me. <laughs> That's it. Now, um, with the the panel, will people get a sneak peek into um the actual? I, uh, I believe movie or... so. They'll prop. Yeah, the, the trailer Ooh. should be getting played. There um, we go. So yeah, you'll you'll get to you'll get to see little snippets. Um, I'm not to be honest, I'm not one hundred percent sure how they're going to do it. I've let Adrian sort of take care of a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but there'll be a Q and A. Um, the MC is going to you know ask Adrian a bunch of questions, and it, it will be fun. You know, I've done Q and As with Adrian in in Los Angeles when we released Battleground, and he's just he's an absolute cinephile. Um, He's the only person I reckon that rattles me a little bit with cinema knowledge. Um, I'm not going to say he's seen more films than me. I'm not going to say that he knows more about cinema than me, but it's, it's like, you know, it gives me a run. That's for sure. Like he, he knows his shit. So he, he's, he's great on stage. So I think if, if anyone uh, watching this wants to check it out, I'd say definitely be worthwhile. Make sure you see uh, Sean Keenan while you're there too. Amazing. But are you Amazing guy. Doesn't self-promote though. Sorry. No, that? not at all. Well, I'm chucking your Twitter um, uh, link in the in the chat. So if uh, oh. any uh, people want to um, uh, follow Martin, um, all of his other links are in there as well uh, that connect up to his um, uh, Twitch and and all of that. And Comics to Movies is on Twitch and we are going live on Twitch. I think I've got two followers which is amazing so if you're over on twitch and you're watching and you want to give us a follow on twitch as well that'd be amazing so i'll, I'll um, build i'll build that up a little bit for you <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a raid a raid oh, you don't know you don't know what a raid is no i've got no idea mate so when you finish your stream you yep. can raid another channel so basically anyone that's watching your stream you send them you press a button it's a raid button and you send your community oh, okay. to go and check them out and oh, uh wow. 
yeah uh That's i can very cool i mean i'm not i'm by far a, a big streamer but uh i can send you you know 10 or 20 people <laughs> <laughs> it's more than two. <laughs> now, now we've had uh cat getting killed in Warzone by Lucas slash Martin is a very sad experience, but an amazing one. Up, up and away, Martin. Yeah, cat. Oh, cat. That's very cool. So, uh, oh, there we go, Sazagal. I'll see you there. I will see you there, Sazagal. So, <laughs> no, what shows are you? Are you doing any shows coming up? Like, I know you're not doing the Supernova Melbourne one, but are you? Uh, appearing anywhere in the next uh, couple of months oh is in uh live appearances yep yep i've got a i think in september i'm doing melbourne and brisbane comic cons oh, okay awesome. uh, i'll be flying back i'm gonna head back to la in at the start of april and then uh fly back for for those comic cons uh which i'm super excited about so yeah i'll be back for those and then what else um i need to start writing my next film i've been uh you know, plotting it out, and yeah, now that the the dunes looks like it's it's getting its screenings, I, I really need to get cracking on that, which I'm super excited about. What about you? Said you're going to LA in April. Um, what are your plans in LA? Anything exciting planned? Or I, no, I haven't got anything booked at the moment. Probably just writing. Um, I'll stream, uh, start training. I want to get back into the gym and you know, get ready for. A, the next Marvel movie that comes my way. It, it's funny because you know you like you just you're constantly auditioning for things and um yeah that's what I'll be doing. I haven't told you my San Chi story, have I? No. So there was a it was film filming in Sydney. So yeah. I have a, a friend of mine. She actually is she was in San Chi. She was in the trailer as well. Uh, she's an extra on the film. So yeah. they had a call out prop they didn't announce what the movie was. You know, they never tell you what the movie is. Oh, you were yeah. looking for this. Looking for, I think, was uh, Asian people who have who can do some martial arts. And I go, I can fake that. I can't do martial arts, but I can <laughs> pretend. Yeah. But on the day where they were doing the call-outs, I can't remember what it was. I, I, I'm absolutely kicking myself. I couldn't remember what it was, but I said, oh, look, I'm really sorry. You're watching you know? TV. Probably just watching TV. <laughs> I, I can't turn up. They don't tell you what the movie is. And then she called me afterwards, just going, oh, by the way, do you know what you missed out on? I'm going, oh, is it just like a fat pizza? Or, you, know, one of, you know, I don't really pizza. care. And then she went, no, 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 no. You missed out on being on Sang Chi. And because not many Asian people did turn up, she said you oh. were almost guaranteed if you had – a certain look you were almost guaranteed in she was saying never miss an opportunity steven never miss an opportunity said, never miss an opportunity i know and if you could even fake it you know you could even fake a little bit that you oh yeah i know judo i know whatever you could if you can lie about it and fake it you would have made the final cut you should say that was they were looking for people that way and i was like oh next time next time what could have no been time, right though. what could have been you know what? Uh, we just have to make our own movies, and, and we, can, we, have we can cast you in those. Oh, perfect! I, I will be background. I'm I'm more than happy okay. to go through guys. We can do. I want to get that dies gruesomely, and if I oh, could I do it, I think that would be even better. I would love like. that. I would I would love a gruesome death scene. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I missed that, and I'm I told Sean this story probably about fifty times. Every time I think Sean rolls his eyes because it's like, <laughs> yeah, I've heard this before. You missed out. <laughs> But it was so close. Like, I, I wanted to see the Marvel movie. And That's the right. We'll, get, we'll is, get you I, in one. We'll get you in one. Every, every stream I do a Star Wars reference, every stream he does a Shang-Chi reference. Yeah. And the thing know. was, I, I even It was a good that. movie. It was a good movie, too. Like, you it, did kind of miss it out. It was. I My really wife liked it. is not not really into all the, the Marvel stuff. And she sat down. She absolutely loved that, um, that film. So Yeah, I um, really enjoyed it. I think it was yeah. the next one was the Immortals, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The Immortals. Yeah. yeah, that one pissed me off. The lighting and was I, too dark. And I was going to well, say, it was, it was, it was a lot change. in it as well. Yeah. I was that Immortals was really messy in terms of too many characters. It's too but much I, going on. I was saying to my friend, I would have paid to go be on the movie. You didn't have to pay me. I would have paid oh, you yeah. to yeah. turn up. And it's oh, like, oh. I've done it. I've I've paid to be in films before. You know, you, you get a good job or a TV show. You get a good job that's out of town, and they want a local hire, and you're like. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I can work local. And then you end up paying to fly yourself there. Oh, 
I'll oh. never do that again. Uh. <laughs> but it's been done early when you're trying to build credits and you're like, shit, yeah. I need to, yeah. I need to bolster this up. You do some crazy shit. Yeah. Oh, and, um, comment from Jack, me. he's right. It, it's the Eternals, not the Immortals. So our chat Eternals, really, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our chat is really good. We used to have quite a few people in the chat that if we didn't know anything, we just tell, we just throw a question out there. To and the, then chat. the answer comes and it comes back. What to was us. the what was the Immortals? Ah, uh, that was a. Um, Henry Sean Cavill. This one actually, Henry Cavill. Yeah, we, we just Henry talked about Cavill. It, yeah, it was um the um story of um Theseus. Theseus. Oh, the one that was directed um, by um William uh, Reffin Redfin geez. or whatever. Oh shit! Yeah. The guy who did Drive. No, it wasn't the same director, was it? Mm. He, he did some significant other films afterwards. Yeah, I never watched that. Yeah, it was 2011. Um, it's called Just uh, Immortals. Immortals. Not the, yeah. The Immortals. Nicholas um, Redding. It had Redding Stephen Dorff, Luke Evans, uh, John Hurt, Isabella Lucas, uh, Henry Cavill, which was uh, before he was, was no, super big. Um, Who directed uh, it? That's all I need to know. The Let's director on. was... Uh, Tarsim Singh. Tarsim Singh. I remember Singh. seeing the poster at Sunset Five. So Immortals. What, what's the one I'm thinking of? Let's. Uh, Someone in let's... chat. You know the one I'm thinking of. Oh, that one. Yeah, I never saw that. Was that a Marvel? No, oh, no, no, no. That, uh... That's that's just uh, I'm like a Greek mythology one. Shit! I can't believe I never watched that. Seventy-five million dollar budget. Hmm. Wow. I'll tell you what I'm thinking of um, is this. Yeah. You might not have watched it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't, didn't realize that. <laughs> but Marty, there's a really famous fight scene in, if I remember the, the models, where everybody is wearing the golden armor. If you they, they do a lot of YouTubes of it, and it's all done in super slow-mo where they're fighting the golden armor, and it's gruesome. Best part it's of the film. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to download it. Um, Valhalla Rising, that's what I'm thinking of. Bad? Um, <laughs> yeah, I... Because I, I know I, tr I tried to watch it, I think, and I I didn't th watch it. Yeah. But I, I, like, I love Drive. And I can understand why you didn't watch it. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was great, and I, and I love that actor that's um, that's in it. Um, oh, what's his name? I'll find out. Give me a second. I'll find out. Mads. That was Mads. Interesting. Okay. The plot thickens. The plot unfolds. Mads Michelson. Mickelson. Yeah, yeah. Who plays Hannibal? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, oh, look. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. Yeah, it's it's worth a watch, but um, yeah. I didn't think it, I didn't think it was great. I think it, it could have been great, but um, it wasn't. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Um, but in saying that, I've watched the first um, episode of Vikings Valhalla on um, Netflix, and that is fantastic. Um, is that a, like a follow-on from Vikings? Yeah, so it's set a hundred years later. Um, okay. So I didn't, I didn't even realize, but um, there was a, 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 a cleansing um, uh, one year where the the king said, "Okay, we're going to get rid of all the the Vikings." So they literally did a purge um, and set all the Vikings up on one night and and wow. killed them all. So now it jumps a year later, and the and the Vikings are going to to take their revenge, but they're kind of in their own. Um, civil war because you've got half the nation that is still what he classifies pagans and then the other half have been Christianized. So right. it, it's it's very interesting and there's a lot just in the first episode um, but moves quite quite quickly and everything. So it's definitely definitely worth a watch. Uh, the whole All season right, dropped. It so what, uh, yeah. what, what's it on? What's it streaming on? Netflix, that one. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. So Vikings Valhalla. So I've always wanted to, I, If I could do a Viking story, I would li really love to do a Viking story. You look like a Viking. Yeah. So I, we in, a, in a good about, way. In a good way. We, Big, we strong talked about beard. Pathway as well. Have you seen that with Carl Urban? No. 
Oh man, that is that is phenomenal. And someone in the chat said to me that that's actually a Norwegian film um, that came out in the late eighties, and that's okay. uh, won won quite a few awards. Then it got turned into a graphic novel, and then they remade it in two thousand eight, I think, um, and it had Carl Urban in it, and that's really good. And that's based on a. Um, uh, Viking getting trapped in uh, North America, and oh, wow. um, and then you got to send come... me the link for that. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll see that. Path, Pathfinder, isn't it, if I remember the name. Mm. Pathfinder, mm. Pathfinder, yeah. So, so what else do you have uh, coming out? Um, after uh, this I've got a vi- I've got a video game coming out. Oh, yep. really? Cool. Yep. Uh, Noodle Juice and the Legend of Diddly D. Okay. Do you want That's to see the opening intro? I'll show it to you. I'll show it to yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. If you're allowed to. No, yeah, it's my game. I can do whatever I like. It's, right, it's your it. game. It's my game. I'm making it. Oh yep. wow! Love Here that. we go. I'll just make sure I've got the opening. Is this the opening? Hang on. Oh yeah, this is it. All right, you ready, everyone? Yeah. I'm giving you a little preview of my game. Okay, I'm gonna oh. have to put it next to my face. All right. Hang on. A time in a land far wait, wait, away. wait, wait, we've got to, we've got to, fuck it, hang on. Here we go. Once upon a time in a land far away, a dragon came and stole all the noodles. The land began to starve, and the people knew that there was only one person who could return the noodles, defeat the dragon, and restore order. That person was Diddly D. This is his legend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. So-, so it's like it's a little uh, 2D platform game. Yep. And, you know, I was like, I, my friend said you should write a list of 100, and th- 100 things that you want to do in your life. And so I wrote this list. And now I keep adding things. Like today I was like, I want to go to the pyramids. ASAP. That was something that today that I got added to my list um, and go down the Nile. But I was sitting there and I'm like, I've never made a video game. I, I love video games. I should make a video game. I made a movie. I'm going to make an album. Might as well make a video game. So anyway, that happened. So it's, it's now it's pretty much finished. It's a 10 level platform game. Um, hoping to release it this year by PAX. And uh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> and it was more just a laugh. You know, it's not going to I'm not expecting to win any awards or anything, but um, I think great. it could be something that people can have a laugh with, and and I can say, yeah, I've got my own game, and I, you know, I, I got to do all the voices myself, and I did the the sounds of all the little monsters that try and eat Diddly D when he's trying to get back the noodles and defeat the dragon. Yum 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 him Bzzz, with the wasps that try and get him because there are giant wasps that try and sting him with their little stingers, and uh, yeah, I went into a, I went into like a, a voice booth and I recorded all of the um. Yeah, recorded all of the the different sounds and it's yeah heaps of fun. So hopefully that'll be out by PAX. Awesome. Oh, and will that be it's a mobile game? Mobile? Yeah, mobile. Uh, I want to have it on Steam and iOS and Android. So you've got a couple of questions actually. So I, I posted okay. up um, and from the chat. So if, if you want to cover them, yep. What directors wow. and cinematographers inspire me? Um, all right, I'm getting out. I'm getting out the phone for that. Um, so in terms of action, um, oh, God, where do I start? I don't want to go the – I don't <laughs> – Sean Keenan. <laughs> He's my favourite. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, I don't, I don't want to go, you know, p- people like – someone like Spielberg I really do love. I know it's, a, it's an easy go-to. Um, but just seeing someone who can pre- oh, fuck, sorry, I'm getting electrocuted by the, uh, <laughs> my equipment is quite radioactive and it electrocutes me a lot. Um, <laughs> someone like Spielberg inspires me because he can pretty much tackle any genre and nail it. There's not, you know, he's done horror. He's, you know, he's done everything, drama, thriller, comedy, everything. Um, and you know, I always really love his work. Um, cinematographers uh recently um 
a guy, actually a guy that I used to knock around with when I was at drama school, Jermaine, um, Jermaine McMicking, he, he, I've been watching him, you know, his career sort of escalate and escalate. And he's, he, he just did Nitram, which won a, you know, a shit ton of awards. Um, but he, you know, his work I really, really admire. Um, who else? Far out. You put me on the spot. <laughs> um, at the end of a Friday night. Uh, oh, man. I don't, I'm going to have to pass on that. I need more time to think. That's okay. Well, well Grace about- said she wants the noodles. You want the noodles? Grace, you can have all the noodles. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, okay, here's one. Like Christopher Nolan, I, I love. Um, what he did with Batman was it just it blew me away i went and saw it in canada by mistake i didn't even for some reason it was a a movie that slipped through the gaps for me and i'd already seen memento which i really liked but there was something about tackling the comic book genre in such a dark and serious way that really i don't think had been done i hadn't seen it being done um you know and I, i grew up on all the original remember the original superman movies which was super campy and ridiculous um the original batmans um you know tim burton's great tim burton's an an interesting one he's i see him more of an as an art like an artist a visual artist um a lot of his films i watch them and i'm story-wise i might not get that into them but visually they're some of the most stunning compositions that i've ever seen in my life um I, i could fuck i could just go on and on i mean i just all i do is watch movies tarantino i mean far out are you kidding See, me? More is trying to get me into um into have trouble. You seen, here. Have you seen The Princess Bride at least? Uh yeah, 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 yeah. What, what yeah. do you think about it before Sean corrupts you? What do you think about it? I, I liked it. I thought it was good. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was good. You know, I mean it's it's I've seen it once. Um I bagged you know, the hell out of it on, on, on air. You, you can. And, I mean, and almost, almost lost all my fan base. So, <laughs> well, but you know, like it's, it's, it's opinions. I, like I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed it. I played poker with Robin Wright Penn. Oh, that was so I'm not going to, I'm yeah. not going to talk badly about it. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's awesome. She was so lovely. Yeah, one of the, Catch one of the she's nicest. Good at putting people somewhere. on the spot. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? We got some other questions. Is that it? I, I think that's it. And look, is that all? With, yeah. Well, we're shit, with two, two minutes to spare. Unbelievable. Yeah. How about that? We're, we're always uh, perfectly on time here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're super excited. You're on Twitch, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram. Facebook, fan pages, all of, all of it. I'm on it all. Just if you go to any of my socials, there's a link in my bio that will take you to a link tree that has all of my other socials on it. And come and say hello. I'd love to see you. I'd love to see you in there. Perfect. Well, we really appreciate your your time, mate. Um, especially on a on a Sunday night when you should probably be kicking back and and relaxing for the uh for the for the rest of the what you've got left of a weekend. So we do really appreciate your your, your time, and um, I will miss you um, at Supernova next week, uh, where yeah. uh, I will I will be a guest, which is very cool. No. <laughs> so, in case anyone uh, was wondering. Uh, Sean's doing a panel at Supernova. I don't even know if he's doing a panel. He's going to be at Supernova yeah, next yeah. week. So I, make sure you go and say hello um, yeah. just so he doesn't have to advertise himself. I'll do it. Yeah, and pretend. the Dunes. Go and see the Dunes panel at 4.30 Saturday. Yeah, so you can do do me at 2 o'clock and then then the 4.30 panel um, uh, uh, on the Dunes. So you can do both of us uh, in the one day. How, how good does that sound? Do you want a little tip? This is what, uh, I, yeah. did. This is what I did at Comic-Con. Get some get some t shirts and freebies, some giveaways, yeah, and just walk walk around throughout the morning, saying, "Hey, I'm doing a panel at two o'clock. We're giving away heaps of free shit. If you're there and you stay for the duration, you you be in the running." And then get everyone to write their name in a hat. That's how I filled out the, <laughs> the entire Q and A session. I just I bribed everybody. I said, "Come <laughs> and we'll do we'll do giveaways." And I gave away copies of the signed copies of the game. That's genius. 
Yeah, you I know? mean, you got to you got to really like it, you, your ego takes a hit because you're like walking around spruiking your own shit when you're like supposed to be the guest. But I'm like, because oh. then I saw other people they'd be there and they they don't have anyone at their booze, and I'm like, I'd rather suffer the embarrassment up front than go there and have it have it packed, even though I know that they're paid guests. I don't care. It's cool. You know what? I'm, I'm thinking about it because what we should have done is I don't even know, but there's a green Sean. You get this. There's a green room usually where. If you have guests, they give you free Coke and pastries and whatever. We should have just got all the bottles of Coke and go, come to the panel. We're giving out free Coke. soda. And then we oh, were. Oh, you took. Jeez, I, I, was, I thought you'd gone real off track there, mate. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> just, just, we're going to get you. We're going to get you on the code. Just doing Coke. I was like, I haven't been in that green room. Hold on. Drink. Drink. No, that's drink. the rock star green room. That doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, God, I can tell you. I just um, learned something I about Stephen tonight. Everybody. We'll give a giveaway, giveaway comics. And I'm sure, look, people are going to want to come and see anyway. Um, yeah, you got a great booth. I went to your, your booth at Comic Con. It was fantastic. Yeah, and it's uh, I've I've got a, a little special announcement that we're going to make uh, tomorrow night. We're going to do awesome. some really cool exclusives for for this event. Um, so uh, I'll tell you what, I should do it now. Let's do it. Now. Do it now. Let's do, do it, it now. now. Let's do it now. Okay, so on uh, the weekend. We're going to have these very cool limited edition comics to movies uh, boxes. Oh. Uh, no, they're, they're boxes. They're going to be filled with uh, all our different comics and everything. Now, when you open it up, they will all be numbered. So they're going to be limited to only 250. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. So how cool is that? And it's going to be filled they're with comics. They're comic, fantastic. Can, comic can you put one aside prints. for me? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Comics, prints, uh, graphic novels, uh, pins. Um, so there'll be a, a very cool, huge saving, and uh, yeah, limited to two hundred and fifty, which is going to be be kind of cool and, and something something different. So yeah, that's awesome. Hey right, guys, well we are going to wrap it up uh, now. Uh, thanks again for coming on. We're going to to show our little um, sizzle reel before we we shoot off, and uh, we'll wish everyone a good night. Awesome, thank you, chat, for coming along and checking it out, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Great chatting with you. No problem. Thanks, chat. See you guys. All right. See ya. <laughs>